How's it going, everybody? AZ Player 21 back again with another episode in our UFC save in WMMA5. And today we have for you UFC on ABC Diaz versus Masvidal 2. So the rematch between Nate Diaz and Jorge Masvidal should be a very big show. Co main event Anthony Rumble Johnson making his return to the octagon against Fabricio Verdum in the heavyweight division. A pretty stacked card, to be honest. Mike Perry taking on Wonderboy Thompson. Joe Lozon taking on Evan Dunham, Eric Koch versus uh, Abubakar Nurmagomedov, excuse me, and Joseph Duffy taking on Clay Guida. There you can see the prelims as well. So no uh, news or emails to really go over. However, I did want to show you guys something. Take a look at the Bantamweight division. Take a look at Henry Cejudo, who's now number six in the rankings after losing his title. He is now on hiatus, so he's decided he's going to take a little bit of a break from MMA. For how long, I do not know, um, but that is where we are at currently with Henry Cejudo. I was thinking about maybe doing him versus Dominic Cruz, or maybe him versus Dillashaw when he returns, but now there's nothing for Cejudo to do because he's not with us right now. So That sucks, but it only makes it even more clear that Marais will be fighting Yawn for the Bantamweight title in the near future. So that is the current plan right now. And um, yeah, that's what we got going on. Um, everything else is taken care of. All the uh, all of the uh, broadcasters are sets and whatnot. Uh, we signed Daniel Cormier as a broadcaster. So he is going to be taking over um, the broadcasting from Kenny Florian, who will probably be releasing. And Daniel Cormier's first show is going to be Habib versus McGregor 2. Of course, we are working our way towards UFC 256 Habib versus McGregor 2. What a main card that we've got for you. Uh, <laughs> Volkanovski Holloway, Aldo versus Sterling, Ferguson Lawler, Romero versus Till, and of course, Nurmagomedov and McGregor. So, we're all ready to go. Let's go ahead and get it started. UFC on ABC, Diaz versus Masvidal 2. Taking place in Florida, the home state of Jorge Masvidal. Let's go ahead and get it going. Starting with our first prelim, Miguel Baeza, who's I think coming off a win over Matt Brown. Uh, taking on Justin Ayari in the welterweight division. Minus 700 favorite, Miguel Baeza. As he actually gets the win via unanimous decision. So improves to 10-0. And, and he invites everyone to party with him. Everyone, let's go party with Miguel Baeza. Alright, Luis El Tigre Gomez taking on Sean Woodson in the featherweight division. 6-1 taking on 7-0. And, oh. and Luis Gomez gets the victory via TKO. Happy to get his uh, debut win. Jamie Alvarez versus Josh Paiva. In the flyweight division, Alvarez seven and one taking on Paiva, who is nine and two, and Alvarez gets the unanimous decision win. So unique choice of hairstyle, but he gets the win here today, and he's happy to have won his UFC debut. Patrick Williams taking on Andre Ewell in the bantamweight division. Patrick Williams nine and six, Ewell is sixteen and six, and Ewell gets the win via sub submission. A guillotine in round number two, despite being the betting underdog. It was rated as a fantastic fight. Love to see that. And you will happy to have won. Yadong Song taking on Brian Boom Kelleher. A pretty big fight in the Bantamweight division right now. Um, not so much in game, but but in real life, these two were to fight. It'd be a pretty good fight. Kelleher coming off the loss to Cody Stammen. And Yadong, the Terminator Song, gets the win via knockout in round number one. And he's happy to have been able to get the stoppage finish. Alex Bruce Leroy Caceres, who's coming off the win over um, Chase Hooper. He's going to be taking on Bryce Thug Nasty Mitchell. Mitchell coming off that win over Charles Rosa in real life. But uh, here in game, he... Oh, that's actually that last thing that he did. So he's coming just off of the, the sales victory with the twister. Undefeated at 12-0, Caceres... A little bit more of a veteran, and Thug Nasty gets the win via submission in round number three. All right, Tisha Torres taking on Felice Herrig. Last prelim of the afternoon, Torres 10 and 6, Herrig 14 and 9. 
and Felice Herrig actually gets the win, and we're probably going to be sending Tisha Torres now down to Invicta, 10-7. and 7. She's probably no longer going to be ranked. We are going to have to send her back down. And Felice Herrig now can be 15-9. and 9. She'll probably climb up the rankings a little bit, and that's after coming off three straight losses, so a, a very uh, important win for, for Herrig there. And she'd like to face off with Jessica Aguilar next. First main card fight on ABC. Joseph Irish Joe Duffy taking on Clay the Carpenter Guida. Guida in game coming off a loss to Nick Lentz on the Nganu versus Lewis fight card. Irish Joe Duffy is coming off a win on the McGregor versus Gaethje fight card over Alan Patrick. Guida is the odds-on favorite, and he gets the win via submission in round number three. And he'd like to fight Vink Pichel next. Interesting call-out, but we'll see. Up next, Eric Newbreed Coke taking on Abubakar Nurmagomedov. 16-3-1 is Nurmagomedov. Eric Newbreed Coke, 17-6. And, and Newbreed Coke gets the win via unanimous decision, now improving to 18-6. and six. In the welterweight division, he's on a three-fight winning streak. Maybe he ends up being ranked. Who knows? Good win for Coke. Joe Lozon, fan favorite, veteran of the Octagon, taking on another one in Evan Dunham. Evan Dunham highly favored here. And Joe Lozon gets a TKO win. Less than a minute into round number one. That's a big win for him. And I'm happy for him. I'm, I've always been a fan of Joe Lozon. I always have been a fan of his. And he, now he's got a little three-fight winning streak going on. So good for him. I remember it was a big deal when he won that fight against Jonathan Pierce. Everyone was rooting for him. Happy that he was able to win. So good for him. Under a minute, gets a win. And he's happy that he was able to uh, prove the bookies wrong. Platinum Mike Perry taking on Steven Wonderboy Thompson. A closer fight than I thought it would be. I, I feel like Wonder Boy would win this easily. In game, Mike Perry is coming off a win over Easy DS. And Wonder Boy is coming off a loss to Santiago Ponzinibbio. All right, I'm going to take Wonder Boy on this one, and he does win via knockout in round number one with three seconds left to go in the round. A big win for Wonder Boy. And he is happy that he was able to get it. A big win for Wonder Boy there. Co-main event of the evening, a returning Anthony Rumble Johnson takes on Fabricio Verdum in our co-main event. Rumble Johnson, the odds-on favorite against a 43-year-old Verdum. And Rumble Johnson gets a knockout two and a half minutes into round number three. So Rumble Johnson firmly in the heavyweight division. And Verdum takes the time to retire from MMA. So Verdum, former heavyweight champion of the world, has retired at 24, 9, and 1. And Anthony Johnson gives a show of respect to Verdum. Main event of the evening, Nate Diaz versus Jorge Masvidal on ABC, the main event. It says that Nate Diaz is actually favored. Masvidal, of course, losing to Kamaru Usman for the title via submission. And Nate Diaz, what has he uh, been up to, Nate? He's coming off a win over Damian Maya. Huh. Interesting. <laughs> a win over Masvidal would probably put Nate Diaz closer to a title shot, if I'm being honest. It's our main event time. Nate Diaz is apparently the favorite. Let's get it going. Diaz trying to start crap early on. Misses a jab, right hook to the ribs, kick to the leg. Diaz pressuring Masvidal. Hits Masvidal with a straight right. Left to the body for Masvidal. Two fighters come forward and engage. Clean right hook to the body for Masvidal. Uh-oh. Masvidal tries to capitalize with the right hand. So Diaz got wobbled a little bit there. Halfway point of the round. Right hand of the body. Diaz comes forward to attack. Two counter jobs for Masvidal. No damage being done here. Late into round number one. Left hook to the side of the body for Masvidal. Looks like he might be winning this round. He had Diaz wobbled earlier on. 
Absorb it on the gloves. Quick left and straight right. Masvidal chooses to wrestle. Masvidal gets the takedown. Oh my god. I think he caught him in a guillotine, but the, the round ended. Diaz almost winning at the, the end of the first round there. Roundhouse kick to the body. Nothing. Diaz moving well, but breathing a little deeper now. This vicious right hand barely misses for Masvidal. Both fighters meeting in the center. Hits a right cross. Halfway through round number two now. Masvidal seems to be winning. That can change in a second, though. Diaz, left hook. Diaz has a cut under his eye now. That's how the fight got stopped the, the, the previous time. Diaz coming forward. Two left hands hit for Masvidal. Under a minute left to go in round number two. Good right hand for Masvidal. Right hook lands for Diaz. Two jabs land for Diaz. Uh-oh. Oh, jeez. Oh, the doctor just checked on the cut. Oh, no. <laughs> Masvidal apparently up two rounds. Engaging in the center. Diaz hits the left cross. Fatigue creaking in. Diaz connects with the left hand. Engaging in the center. Exchange of strikes doesn't go anywhere. Halfway through the round. Diaz still coming forward. Quick 1-2 doesn't land. Right hook. Connects cleanly with the right hand. Masvidal slowing down a bit. A little more than halfway through round number three. Diaz looks very tired out there. Lead leg kick. Under a minute left to go in round number three. Masvidal firmly ahead on the scorecards. Masvidal going for another takedown. Sweep now. Diaz has really good jiu-jitsu. I don't know why Masvidal's trying to take him down. Round four with Masvidal apparently up all three rounds. Diaz moving around the cage. Masvidal going for another takedown. I don't know why he's doing that. Diaz can submit him from the ground. Scrambling for position. Masvidal using some dirty boxing. A little over a minute left to go here in round number four. Diaz has taken some damage to his legs. Diaz scores with the left hook. Round number four is done. Apparently Diaz needs a finish. This is the final round. Let's go. Connects. Can't connect with the right hand. Two fighters engage. That cut has been reopened. Diaz tries to use a takedown. He can't get it. Masvidal now trying to sweep. Nothing but pull guard. I don't know why. I still don't know why Masvidal is trying to take him down. Diaz can finish him from the bottom, but only a minute left to go now in the round, and time is ticking away. Referee stands them back up. Diaz connects with the left hand. And that's it. I think Jorge won this by a landslide. Here comes my crappy Bruce Buffer impersonation. Ladies and gentlemen, after five rounds... We go to the scorecards for decision. The judges score the contest 50-45, 50-45, and 49-46 for the winner by unanimous decision, Jorge Gamebred Masvidal. So Jorge Masvidal beats Nate Diaz via unanimous decision. No stoppage. Unanimous decision. Fight was only rated as being decent. Interesting. A good talker, Jorge Masvidal, always going to be benefited. So he doesn't call anybody out, but he gets the win over Nate Diaz the right way this time. Attendance of 4,000. Not a great gate, but that's because this is a lesser show. 
All right. Popularity increases all around. You love to see that. Let's see now. Fight of the Night is going to go to that prelim fight. That's fantastic. Ewell and Williams. And let's see. Joe Lozon gets a performance bonus. And, uh... See anybody else? Wonder Boy. Yadong Song. First round knockout. And Yadong Song is going to get one as well. Nice profit of 2 million. You like to see that. Go ahead and update our rankings. Take a look at our emails. And then we will be done with this episode. Our next episode, I think, is the... Uh, Asparsa versus, uh, what is it? Why am I forgetting her name? Not Tisha Torres. Oh, Suarez. So Suarez versus Asparsa. That's going to be our next uh, fight card. That's going to be our first fight card in France. Anthony Johnson getting a big win. Fabrizio Verdum retires. I can try to talk him out of retirement, but he's like 42 years old. So I doubt he'll come back, really. Same thing with uh, Big Country. Roy Nelson's 44. So, I mean, we, we, we got him on a contract. But he could up and retire after this next fight we have scheduled for him. I'd be surprised if he didn't retire, to be honest. 44, especially if he loses. If he were to lose, I'd almost guarantee that he retires, being 44 years old and everything. Hope you guys are enjoying your Wednesday afternoon, 6 p.m., where I am at currently. Going to be recording a bit of this UFC save. And then maybe doing a little bit of Shadow Ridge Fighting Championships. Maybe some pride. It's been a while since I've visited uh, Shadow Ridge Fighting Championships. And I was just starting to get really good with it too. Made a couple pretty big signings. <clears throat> Only thing is that it takes forever to kind of, you know, simulate through and then... Having to constantly look through. All right. So let's update our rankings. Right, so Augusto Sakai has debuted in the rankings. Everyone else moves up. Some people move down. Anthony Johnson now number four in the heavyweight division after beating Fabricio Verdum. Right. Light heavyweight, no movements. Middleweight, no movements. At welterweight, uh, Nate Diaz moves down to 10. Jorge moves up to 8. These guys move up. Wonder Boy moves up to 11. Mike Perry is down to 17. Lightweight, Clay Guida debuts, interestingly enough. Featherweight, there is no movement. Bantamweight, so uh, Song Yedong is up to number 15. Alejandro Perez is now at 25. Flyweight, no movements. Women's featherweight, we have a couple of people who are debuting because um, they've been signed. Jessica Mielli, I think I'm going to keep. Yeah, so she'll stay there. Leah McCourt is going to be sent down to Invicta once she uh, finishes that fight that she has scheduled.
Okay. Uh, so let's check the rankings once again. I got thrown off by Spencer being available. Uh, Bantamweight Holly Holm has redebuted, which is good. She has a fight tentatively scheduled uh, against Marianne Renault, and she's back in 14 days. That's good. Uh, Sarah McMahon comes back. Landsberg comes back. That's all good. Flyweight, no one moves. Strawweight, Felice Herrick moves up. Alexandra Albu debuts, and um, we are going to have to send down Tisha Torres. So Henry Cejudo has signed his deal. He signed his contract extension, but he's still on hiatus. That's uh, very confusing. Evan Dunham needs to be re-signed. Do we re-sign him? What has he been up to? Low-level national. I mean, yeah. Low-level national, but we could still use him. Give him 7k. Valerie Lareda signs. Uh, David Dvorak doesn't really sign. Tiffany Van Soas needs to be sent down. Joe Lozon needs to be re signed. Let's take care of that. High level national for Joe Lozon. Love to see it. Uh, Fabrizio Verdum retired. And he's how old? 43. So I can try. No, he's not going to come out of retirement. So all the best in the world to Fabrizio Verdum. He's not very good as an analyst, so we're not going to bring him in. Patrick Williams coming to the end of his deal. He's 9-7. and seven. I mean, he got a win over Umar. Uh, yeah, no. No, low level. No, we're not going to bring him in. Sorry. Best of luck to you, Patrick Williams. Eric Koch. Need to resign him. Coming off a win, especially. Low level national. 7,000. Alrighty. Justin Ayari coming off a loss. Eesh, one and three. Yeah, we're going to go ahead and let him go. Goodbye to Justin Ayari. Jorge Masvidal needs to be re-signed. Let's go ahead and take care of that. Just straight up. Mike Perry needs to be re-signed. Love that. Nate Diaz needs to be re-signed. Let's take care of that as well. Huh. Okay, there we go. Wonder Boy needs to be re-signed. That's all good. Ooh, Wonder Boy. Oh. I see you, Wonder Boy. Let's, uh... Let's do this. How about this? All right, I see you. Uh, I, I, I want to fight, so give me a little little pay raise. I see you, Andre Ewell. Go ahead and resign him as well. Give him that extra two fifty. I'm gonna need about tree fitted. Clay Guida. Uh, 
Fox Sports Australia, ESPN UK, Osteca Trosse. Forty-three million. So we're still like minus six and a half million dollars from when we started. That's okay. We'll keep on progressively making more money as we put on more fight cards because people are going to be like making less money. So I think that just about does it. Uh, let's see, is there anybody notable that I need to look at signing? I do not think so. Uh, all right. So that's going to do it. The next time I, that I see you guys will be... Oh, my goodness. Are they really running that many? Yeah, they are. So it will be for UFC on ESPN, Esparza versus Suarez. Our first fight card in France. Esparza versus Suarez, our co event. Not the best main card, but it's, a, it's an international card. So it doesn't necessarily need to be that strong anyways. So that's going to do it. For us here, AZPlyo21 is the channel name. Thank you guys for watching. As always, be sure to like the video. Be sure to subscribe. Be sure to follow my Twitch channel so you can catch streams of when I do the Pride Save or the pay-per-views. I'll see you guys later. Have a great day.